It is a meatless Monday, but we don't even need any meat in our Fox 2 kitchen this morning because we have so many delicious things going on here. Joining us to cook is Chef Johnny Prep. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you. We should tell everybody. So you are a private chef. I am. You have a company that um, quality for kids where you go into schools. We do. We promote nutrition with kids. We try to teach them how to cook and get them to convince each other to eat healthy. And we're very active. We got a competition coming up June 1st at Henry Ford Hospital in West Bloomfield with all the kids and everything. And it's we're pretty cool we're how you do it. That. You yeah. turn it into there's a little bit of math involved. There's presentations involved. Yep. And also you've written a book here. Here I'll grab it for you. You got it. Written a book. The magic of cooking with really good broth. Right. You know, I mean, with chefs, they always use stocks. It's kind of a secret, but they always have really good stocks in their pantry. Yeah. And, you know, what this is really represents is a book that shows you all the things you learn in your first culinary class at culinary school. That's what we need, For the home Johnny. cook. So it's yes. got, it comes with a video on knife skills. It comes with a video on herbs and spices, and that's all about making stocks and broths. And we're going to do a whole series so the home cook can have access to the same things they teach in culinary school. And Chef Kelly helped you with this. Chef Kelly Luton helped me with that. We're right. partners on this. We're writing another one right now on uh, breakfast, brunches, and buffets. Very nice. And we're very excited about it. Thank you. It's such a different cookbook. We've seen a million cookbooks out there, and that's different. One on broth. You okay. Know? So what do we got here on our Meatless Monday? Well, what we wanted to do is show people how to make a very, very simple thing at home is pizza bread. And yes. you know, the thing that can really take pizza from being good pizza to great pizza is to cook your toppings first. Oh. And to really bring out the flavor. So what I've done here is I've taken some red and yellow peppers. Yeah. And I've taken some shiitake mushrooms and I've sauteed them with just a little bit of olive oil, a little bit of garlic, some sea salt, and some fresh ground black pepper. Okay. You know, because now you've got nice caramelization, you've got real development of these flavors. I mean, these taste a heck of a lot better than just taking the raw vegetables over yeah. there and pop them on top of a pizza. It's amazing what happens when you cook them, how it oh, brings out that natural sugar, or I don't know what's going on in there. It does. It brings out the natural sugar. It also takes some of the liquids out of them, which concentrates the the flavors a little bit, mm -hmm. you know, and you just pile that on there. And you can do this with leftovers, you know, I mean, if you have some nice vegetables in the fridge that you had the day before and you want to pop them on a pizza, and you can put as much cheese on you want, you can let the kids make them because they'll definitely eat them if they make them themselves. So, wait a minute, is this a, a loaf of bread or what's going on with the It crust? is. See, what I did is I bought some good quality French bread, and you can actually get three, three out of these because they're so big. Okay. I got them at a local bakery this morning, as a matter of fact, and you can just cut them up. And we put them down. I made some tomato sauce. Now, if you're at home and you got some bottled sauce you want to use for tomato sauce, I always tell people don't put too much tomato sauce on, because if you put too much tomato sauce on, more likely you're going to burn the top of your mouth. Oh. Because okay. the cheese insulates it and it keeps it really, really hot. Yeah. And it, it's not a fun feeling to have it on your mouth. No, that's the worst. Now, here's another one that we did. Whoops. Let's, let's put a little bit of mozzarella cheese on there. You can you can play with the cheeses. You know, you can use Asiago, Fontanella. You can use Munster. Is really good on pizzas. What it's about a great a Gouda? melting cheese. Gouda cheese is really wonderful. I kind of think of more cheeses. Munster's what I put on my sliders. Good. I love is Munster. It? Yeah, Munster's is a great melting cheese. You know, that's really what uh, actually the Mexicans use predominantly on their food in the United States. Um, all right, so what do you got? Spinach there. We got spinach. We got caramelized onions. Uh -huh. I'm going to put a little bit on there. I really like grilled eggplant, so I throw a little bit of grilled eggplant on there. Okay. You know, and we're going to put that on that there looks like good. that. The grill marks. We're going to put a little bit of zucchini on there. You know, and then a couple things you can do to really pop up your flavor of your pizzas. And this is this is something they don't do in a lot of pizzerias anymore. They used to take fresh or dried oregano and just put a little bit of dried oregano. This really makes it taste like pizza. I'm telling you. Yeah. You know, that's that was the ingredient that always set my dad's pizza apart. That when I was growing up, when he made homemade pizza, oregano was key. And, and it, I'm carrying that forward at home with my daughter now. Mm -hmm. I make a pizza, I put oregano on. It makes a big difference, doesn't it? You just don't. You really don't get that at the the pizza place. It's a very anymore. distinct flavor, yeah. and you notice it when it's not. Now, what if you just use the Italian seasoning? I have like a grinder with Italian seasoning. That's got some oregano. oregano. That's got basil. some oregano into it. It's got a little yeah. bit fuller flavor. That's really good too. That's okay. a nice. That's a nice. I mean, I'm a huge fan of Italian seasoning. I put a little Parmigiano Reggiano on there. All right. We'll pop, get this ready to go. I've got actually, I think, a couple in the oven that we're all you ready to take out here. Huh? And you know, the nice thing is everything's cooked, so it only yes. takes about five minutes to melt things. So we'll just switch these out. There you go. And then you would cut this kind of um, long ways and get some you nice You know, I tend to cut slices. it this way, like yeah. that, nice slices. And uh, and so this could be dinner. You put this with the salad and you got dinner, right? Absolutely. You that's put it I'm with thinking. a salad and you've got a fantastic dinner. And I'm telling you, this takes like 15 minutes to make. Yeah, that's I mean, good. it's really, really Here. quick, fast. Oh, that's not a knife. Where'd my bread knife go? That's there it is. A knife. This is uh, interesting. I love this grater, though. That's cool. Those are really nice graters. You know, they really are. And they take that a looks lot like of something 
Yeah, you could use it as a weapon. <laughs> oh, wow. You know, you can buy, I mean, I love to make my own dough, and I've got some pretty darn good recipes. Yeah. But for the home cook, you can really go to a bakery and buy really good bread. I used to go to a pizza shop, and they would sell me their raw pizza dough. Really? And that's that's a nice idea, too. You want to make at home with the kids? Thank there you. There you go. All right, thanks. You're Johnny, welcome. Johnny, good stuff. Thank you. we got to go. We'll put the recipe okay. on our website, myfoxdetroit.com. Thank you for having us. Good stuff. Enjoy. Good yes. seeing you guys. Thank you.